Hello everybody, welcome back to BSG Annual 2021. I am Zonorus, and I am not joined by one, but by two very awesome people here. And we'll be having a short interview about some very cool stuff. But quickly before that, I just want to shout out to everybody. Thank you very much. We raised 3,000 euros so far. That is quite the accomplishment. So thanks everybody for the donations so far. That is uh, pretty pog. Um, yeah. So these two fine gentlemen will be uh, speedrunning a very special game in, um, in like one and a half hours-ish, more or less. And it's going to be a Super Metroid and Link to the Past online co-op combo randomizer thing something. So Congrats. first question, uh, I guess for Zida here, can you maybe explain for everybody watching who understood understood like exactly zero from what I just said? What what did I just say? What what exactly are the two of you are going to do? Okay, so uh, a whole while back they discovered that A Link to the Past and Super Metroid um, don't share any memory values. Therefore, you know they could blend the games uh, together. So the combo randomizer was born. Uh, everyone liked the Link to the Past randomizers. A lot of people liked uh, Super Metroid as well. So they made one big randomizer. So all the items from Super Metroid and a Link to the Past are dropped into one big pool and will be scattered throughout both games. So what we are going to do is we are going to play online co-op, meaning we will uh, playing the exact same seed, be in each other's world as to speak, so uh, if Killer Tear finds a hookshot, I will get that hookshot as well. If I find more of ball, you'll get more of ball as well, and so on and so on. Uh, that that is specifically through a specific emulator, which runs a specific script to make that all work. And that, that I guess that's about it. Yeah, um, there's a few silly quirks that come with playing at uh, uh, co-op. But I suppose we'll get to that once the run actually starts, because yeah. it's, it's a few very funny things, like suddenly having 60 keys in a dungeon or something. Yeah, for some reason, the, the, there's a little desync in, in memory there. So when I, I've had it that I entered Hyrule Castle, the, the like the escape sequence, there's one small key in there. Just one. I've entered it with 60. Yeah. And ended it with 98. I did not pick up 38 keys, it's just the memory going, I don't know what to do, here's more keys. Th those kind of quirks. We'll try to avoid abusing those things, though, to, to keep things um, yeah, as normal as one should do on their own. I see, okay. Hopefully this explanation helps uh, people in, in the chat to understand this... Um, this mega speedrun thing that is going to happen, which you all should watch, by the way. It's going to be very awesome. Um, okay, so for the next question, a killer. So you're the two of you are basically not playing one randomizer, but kind of two randomizer, like mixed into one mega randomizer. So are you guys playing on any like marathon safe seats or are you just submitting yourself to the pure chaos that can be a randomizer to do the worst things possible or are there any um generally like measures we, you generally we got like the average settings that you would play if you just use most default settings uh however since i'm going to be mostly focused on super metroid where Xeta's going to be focused on mostly on link to the past we opted to use uh early morph ball uh as a setting so that i could get started on super metroid a lot earlier and all that um yeah. Other than that, a lot of things could happen, and we'll yeah. just have to see. Uh, the only thing that we have done is asked Boxmeister, uh, one of our co-commentators and well-known Metroid fanatic, to actually roll us a seat and go through the spoiler log to see if there's any like absurd logical things, like uh, needing to do constant infinite bomb jumps mm -hmm. in order to get me like one item. Right. And to, to emphasize on, on like what Killer said with the early morph ball, early morph ball says that it will be available from the start of the game. It's not specifically in Metroid or, you know, but it is at least available without obtaining any weapons, given that bombs in the Link to the Past are not considered items. They are just, well, they are just an item that you can use, but they, like, 
they implement it in a way that the bomb locations are always in logic from the start up because you can farm them. Yeah. So and besides that, it's we're gonna get pure chaos. So I hope great. people are ready for that. <laughs> I sure am not. <laughs> mm -hmm. That sounds like something good for the viewers, but not necessarily for the two of you. So yeah. exciting. Yeah, shout out to Boxmeister who also did uh, Metroid Zero Mission earlier in the marathon. So you were right with the Metroid fanatic thing. Uh, let's see, next question here. So um, tell us a little bit how the two of you, because this is like a co-op thing where both of you like participate into like finishing this quote unquote run. Mm -hmm. is, is there going to be like some sort of like communication between the two of you? Or if so, how exactly like... If I'm imagine like somebody who has no idea what you're about to do, like walk us through how like a playthrough of like a combo randomizer would go for the two of you. Uh, well, we start off in, in Super Metroid. Uh, there's like two checks you can do. Killer Terror will go and check those. I will already go into Link to the Past to do like the first few checks there. Depending on what I find, I uh, either go into the castle, go to like the southern road as we call it, so you need bombs for that. If I find bombs, I will go there. And like Kekariku Village, most of you know that if you've played a Zelda game, in A Link to the Past, it is the location to start out in. It has, I think, 15 to 20 items, roughly. So Roughly, yeah. That's the location you kind of want to go to. And as Sounds soon as promising. We... Yeah, and as soon as we find that morph ball that we're we, that we've spoken of, and I think it's like a few power bombs, but yeah, those are generally something given... for me to open walls or doors yeah. or things. At that moment, Killer Tear will actually you know finish up what he's doing at that point and go to Super Metroid. He'll be in Super Metroid ninety five percent of the time. I'll be in the link to the past ninety five percent of the time. But there are instances where we have to go into each other's game. Um, either to get to another location in our own game or because we simply have no checks left. We will communicate like, hey, I'm going there, or hey, I've seen that item on that location, so I need that item, or I need to do defeat that boss. Or So we do keep each other updated. It's also like, I found that item. I know it's not super important, but would you still like it? Or you know, are you saying, nah, leave it behind, that kind of... And um, chances are, um, since uh, Link to the Past has a few more items than Metroid in total values, that I might be dipping Link to the Past a little bit every now and then, if, for instance, I require a major item that we haven't found yet. Yeah, or is routing-wise just a smarter move? Um, one example of could be if Killer Chair is in Lower North Air, uh, there is a portal there to go to uh, the, the Meyer area in Link to the Past, if we don't have a flute or a second glove, so I can't actually go there myself, he will go into that area, do the checks there, potentially even clear the dungeon if needed, so that we we won't get stuck at that. Uh, we, we do communicate that. We, we try to like adjust our routing based on that. And uh, Super Metroid has 100 items in total. A link to the past has 216. So there's not quite a bit of, yeah, there's a little difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanos would not be happy. Okay, okay. here's a quick uh, clarification question because I think I initially understood this like wrong. So basically both of you are playing like a game, but whatever you do and like find gets like mirrored to the other player as well. Yeah. So technically both of you can play Super Metroid and Link yes. to the Past at any moment you want. Yeah, we're essentially okay. playing a one a single player game, but we somehow squeeze another player into the mix. Yeah, and it's, you, it's... the two of you just have like a gentleman's agreement that Zeta does like the link to the past parts and Killer does like the Super Metroid parts. But technically, you can like yeah play however like yeah do like fifty fifty or whatever you yeah, like. We right? want, if we want that, we could yes. All right, and and like both of us know both games. It's like, I am not as good in Super Metroid as Killer Chair is, uh, so I prefer to keep away from Metroid, but if need be, I can stand my ground there and I can defeat all bosses. It's, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a thing. And the other way around goes the same way, I believe. 
yeah, you've got a little bit more knowledge on some intricate things in Link to the Past, but generally I'll be able to do everything if need. I see. So would you say it is required for a co-op partner that he or she has the knowledge of the other game to play this combo rando, or I would can you like... say no, uh, since if one player knows how to beat their game and the other player knows how to beat the game, all you really need to know eventually is how to beat Ganon. <laughs> since yep. There's a weird quirk to the combo randomizer in that only one player, if you played co-op, co needs to beat Mother Brain. The flag sort of gets set like you beat Mother Brain and done. You don't even have to do the escape sequence. No, I know. I see. But Ganon is not like that for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, then I have one more clarification question that some people in chat just might don't know. So if both of you can access both of the games at any time, how is that like worked into the game that you can like switch in? Like, uh, how do you switch between games? There's um, scattered around the world. There's four portals. Um, there are in, in games in the link to the past or houses in the link to the past that generally aren't used for anything important. They are just, you know, it's a house with either nothing in it or a cave with nothing important in it. And um, they are specifically linked to four locations in Super Metroid. One is at, like, the very start. Um, the other one is in... Uh, Lower North Air. Lo no, yeah, Lower North Air has oh, yeah, one. Upper, yeah. upper North Air has one. So yeah. just... And uh, one is in Meridia. Yeah. The, the one in Meridia is a really quirky one, because I didn't even know that area existed until I started playing the combo randomizer. It's like, it's pretty much hidden behind the wall and you need like spring ball to get to ruin it logically. It's it's like a really weird one. The other three are fairly known to people. So the only quote unquote requirement is that you can actually access set location. I that, see. That's, that, that's the way it's it's been designed and I mean, for us, it's it's logical by now, but mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, for people that have not played it, it's it's a bit of a... a Go hassle. watch the run, you'll see yeah, definitely exactly how it is. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely recommend uh, you uh, all of you checking out this, this co-op run. But yeah, this sounds very interesting. Um, I think I should try this at some point. Let's see. So, um, Zida, so in the past, uh, you have been doing quite a lot of these co-op runs at marathons with... Your fellow commentator there, uh, Wired Wiki, a lot of like the Zelda co-ops and stuff. Yes. Um, but I personally, you might have, but I personally never saw seen you with Killer Chair doing co-op stuff. So mm -hmm. how did like the two of you end up? Is there a special story or just a, hey, bro, you want to play? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, it kind of went that way. But <laughs> yeah, the two of us are, are well, we are part of the, the our, our group we call the multi rec crew. Um, you made Tsubasa is in there, Shadows to you may uh, Ash is in there, Box is in there, Wiki is in there. Like uh, Ras, who's probably gonna be the host for uh well not even probably, he is gonna host, be a host for our run. Like mm -hmm. we've got a like a group together of people that like to play multi worlds or, or randomizers in general. And well yeah, I, I was like, hmm, co op multi worlds or co op super rando sounds like a really fun idea. And Killer J was like Sure, I, I, I'll jump in. I believe at first we weren't even sure if the combo render would work. Yeah, it's like... The, um, we tried it with Link to the Past and that was fun. Yes. And then we were like, let's see if the combo render yeah, works. Yeah, because uh, back when I did my online co-op with Wired Wiki on BSG and, well, after that on the ESA as well, the, the emulator was still like, or the script was still only focused on Link to the Past. And at a certain update, there was like a line that said, now works with uh, Super Metroid uh, A Link to the Past combo rando. And we're like, want to try that out at one time? And well, at, at, we tried out like a few seeds, I think. And then we were like, should we submit this to BSD? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. Hell that's, yeah. That, that, that's how we actually ended up together. All right. That sounds pretty awesome. I was not aware of this, of this, of this crew. Let's see. So Where final question here. Uh, for you, Killer. Um, so before, I, I mean, I think I kind of just got the answer to this, but before uh, doing this, 
this year with the Zeta? Have you dabbled in like these online co-ops and, and randos before or uh, is this your like first go at it? I mean, in, com in terms of like the, the co-op randos, this is definitely kind of where it started before doing these. Um, I did a few co-ops with both Xeta and Wiki, Wired Wiki. Um, but yeah, as, as a as like a bigger thing, this definitely started fairly recently, uh, around submission date. Um, yeah, overall, I've been playing combo rando multi worlds with the whole gang for over a year now. I see. Awesome. So yeah, there we have it. Uh, I hope. We could enlighten chat a little bit about the this like this train that uh, this brain thing where like what exactly is this run this combo two games rando very confusing but hopefully we could clarify a little bit uh, i personally am looking really forward to this one it's going to be pretty amazing especially if you're a fan of both of these games but even if you're just a fan of one game it should be it should be enough um and, and according to Boxmeister, because he, he has rolled the seat already, we will be in for a few challenges. So this is not going to be a, ah, uh, this is super easy. It's not going to be a walk in the park. We are definitely going to get, you know, bullied by the game. So for people that want to watch, please do, because you'll see us suffer. Probably. Awesome. Any final words any of you two would like to say? Any final shout outs before we throw it back to the actual speedruns? Uh, game have mercy. Yeah, please. <laughs> Orange Jesus, have mercy on my soul. Can, can we get some praise in the chat? Yes. All right. Awesome. Hey, thank you very much, both of you, for, for joining me for this quick interview. Uh, if I remember correctly, or if, I, if I'm looking at the schedule right now, we will be seeing um, good friend Green Snowdog with some Captain Toe treasure tracker uh, next up. So, uh, yeah, please stay tuned, everybody, and please look forward to the Super Metroid and Link to the Past uh, online, co online co op combo rando in, uh, in about, yeah, like one hour, one and a half hours. So, uh, yeah, back to intermission, I guess. See you guys uh, later. Please enjoy the rest of uh, BSG here. <laughs>